Hi, how you doing? I'm having fun with Discover Station and actually this is the Core Station version. What it requires to make this library work is you have to own Unify. That's available at our website, pluginguru.com. Unify 1.3 is what we released at the same time we released this library. You need to use Unify 1.3. It has all of the updates to MIDI box and combo box and all the other things that makes this library work. It doesn't work without it. And then here's the course station itself. If you wish to buy from my website, it is a library of 185 patches for both Discover and Core of this. This is the BBC Symphony Orchestra. It is a sample library plugin. It's a single plugin that has all the instruments of the library, these little colored cells you can click are different sections, like the strings or the violins or the cellos, the French horns, the trumpets, trombones, tubas, all of that stuff. Discover is $49 and is really reasonably priced for what you are getting. It's the best bang for the buck for a starting orchestra for someone to just want to get into orchestration, have all the instruments available. It's a great way to go. Um, and if it's outside of your budget, you're a student, other situations are around us with the pandemic and stuff. You can send a note to them. There's a two-week window, and then it's free. So you can get the library itself for free. Um, core Station, the library that's called Core Station, is for the core version of the library. It's more expensive. It has way more samples, more articulations, all sorts of really nice enhancements. It's definitely worth the price if you are getting a little bit higher up on the level of music and you want to be a little bit more authentic to an orchestra and more dynamics. And I'll show you another example of the difference between the two in a minute. And then professional, what happens with, it's kind of like a waterfall. Professional includes core and discover. Core includes discover and discover is just discover. So if you buy the professional version, you can play both the discover station library and the core station library. And the instruments and the maps from my understanding are identical between core and professional. Other than in professional, you have microphone levels for all like 12 different sets of microphones. And if you want it to be dry, you can remove the room from the sound. So it's a dry orchestra. All sorts of things you can't do in core. You don't have access to the separate audio signals that were recorded when they recorded the orchestra. In professional, you do. So if you're at the upper levels and you're a professional, then you'd want to go for the professional because this way, if you want a dry orchestra, you can turn down the ambience and the reverbs and get a dry orchestra. It's possible. So spitfireaudio.com, look for the BBC Symphony Orchestra and go from there. And here is the purchase page for the Discover and Core Station. And um, yeah, so that is where it's found at my website. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to talk just for a minute about installation and then we'll do the walkthrough, okay? Double click to install the file when you download it. This will unzip it and you can open this and it has, as you can see, the core station and the discoverstation.guru files. These go into Unify and install everything automatically. You don't have to put anything into folders. There's no manual installation with Unify. There is a license number, so you need to have your license number that you've gotten when you've bought Discover Station, it comes with the license number. So have that available. You'll need it in a minute. Now, if you only have the Discover version of the BBC Symphony Orchestra, the $50 library, then you would only install the Discover Station version of the library. Just drag over the interface, let go. It says, do you want to install? If I say OK, it will install it. I already have it installed, so I don't need to do that. Now, if you own the core edition of the Symphony Orchestra, then you can click and drag and say, OK, if you've already put in your license number with Discover Station, it'll just install and you don't have to put in a license again. They're both connected and protected by the same license number on your computer, but they are protected. You can't install it and it won't work without a license number by buying it from yours truly. So that's very nice to have protection to our work. Very nice. 
and as you can see, it, once it's installed, you have 185 patches. They are the same between Discover Station and Core Station. Uh, there is a difference in the sounds. Let me show you that really quick. Let's go to the strings. This is the spiccato strings, the short, strong attack in Core Station. You can play notes over and over. If I do the same thing in Discover Station, you will hear very quickly one of the big differences. This is without round robins, the same samples every time you play notes. Because it's playing the same, it's like repeating the same picture, boom, 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 with the same picture, right? If you play, musically bouncing around and so forth, that you can use those samples and it sounds just fine. But again, it's an incredible starting point to start with the Discover Station Library Discover. You can upgrade in the future. If you've paid money for Discover, um, that is removed from the, upgrade, from the upgrade cost to Core. So something to consider for the future, okay? It is upgradable. You can go to the bigger versions over time. It's start here, go here, Go to professional, you know, once you get your film scoring debut gig and you need to have control over the mix and so forth, right? Okay, so I'm going to play this from Discover Station since that's what the library was made for. The purchase includes both versions of the libraries. But I'm playing it from Discover for the most part. There are times I'll jump over to Core. You'll be able to tell because this icon goes from colorful which is the Discover Station version because its interface is nice and colorful in Discover, uh, to a grayscale. Okay. And some of the bells and stuff play differently. Um, any of you guys, if you can tell me, I can't figure out what is going on or why, but like the bells, they don't sustain out in Core Station. In Discover Station, they sustain out. That's the sound I want. I can't get it out of the Core Station version of the library, and I don't know why. I've got sustain patches. <laughs> I think there's something wrong, but I don't know. If you have something in the comments to explain, if there's a weighted change between long sustain and short sustain, um, I couldn't figure that out. So here we go. There's a handful of bell patches. Um, is using a combination of patches from Unify with some of the patches from the BBC Symphony Orchestra. chord but okay harp and glock and you'll notice that there's jitterbox on all all of these have some sort of a jitterbox in some fashion or another uh, it just makes everything in fact I believe let's see on the master, there's a jitter timing, so you can turn it off. All the mounts play at the same time, exact, or random timing. I should point out most of the patches have knob assignments, so make sure you click the macro knob button and see what kind of things you have to alter the volume so I could. These parameters, these knobs can all be automated in your sequencer. So if you want different parameters inside of the different plugins, 
to be automated, all you do is assign them going link parameters, go up here to something and say, I want to alter this parameter with the knob and you can set up any parameter in any plugin to be controlled in real time. And now you can automate that in your sequencer. Okay. I'm going to be making a follow-up video specifically about automation and macro knobs um, later this week, next week. So that will be coming a uh, little tight. nice bells of all sorts, snappy new mallets. Twinkle dust and ice cream trucks. Um, so, those are different ensemble layers, different mixes of elements. Uh, BPM Brass will be MIDI box driven. What this means, when you play one note, you can hear the MIDI file. So all I did is I played as a MIDI sequence and then when you put that into MIDI box, there's a parameter right here called um, polytranspose and that allows it to take that one note and now replay it on whatever notes you play in real time. So. Now, if you turn off MIDI box, you have where it says Unify. If you open this up, you'll notice it actually has two different Unify plugins inside of a Unify plugin inside. <laughs> it gets rather deep, but we have both the brass and the staccatos together. So you get that nice blat and then it sustains. Right? So if you open each of these, you can see there's, you know, six instruments here and five instruments here. So there's 11 plugins being played, even though it just says Unify. So it's kind of deceptive sometimes. And then you have control with a separate mix. If you don't want the tubas and you don't want French horns. If you just want the trumpets, then turn these guys down and... just the trumpets. So you can vary this as you're sequencing, automating these sliders will change the volume of the ensemble. So it can like emphasize certain vibes, so forth. That's the same with all these I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna play this a little bit. Different timing articulations. Mozart's Brass. Different mix of the ensemble pieces. Running free. If you just hold it down. You even have a brass waltz. Right. Next, we get to BPM drum. These are using the um, BBC Symphony Orchestra untuned percussion, along in some cases with timpanis. And we have our own Piate crash because uh, we compatibility between Core and Discover. The Piate in Discover is a sleigh bell sample in Core, and so we couldn't use the BBC Orchestra uh, Piate crash. So we created our own and we also wanted to record both the opening and the close so we have those that now this is three four 
There's three different 3-4 patterns. Using the different drums. And they're designed to where they play just right here. Anywhere on the keyboard, it's the same thing. So what happens and what this means is you can go anywhere uh, we have three, four strings right here. So we could say proud waltz, load into a new unify layer. It's now loaded a single unify with, if you open this up, you'll see that it's a unify plugin that has five plugins inside of it doing strings. So you can use these together because you can stack. If I go over here to the BPM brass, remember there's a three, four brass. So go BPM brass, uh, waltz horns, add that into unify as a new unify layer and turn them down. So that's the power of unify is that patches can be loaded into themselves. So all of these little tiny things that are um, components, you can combine them, which is really, really fun. Okay, so we have three, four, we have five, four drums. And we have five, four strings. So if I come down here to strings and I say five, four strings. If you open up this unify layer, on its knobs is a pattern knob, which is set up to MIDI box to switch between four different three, uh, five, four patterns, right? So I could use this. So you have alternate patterns inside of some of the string patterns and stuff like that. So very, very fun how flexible you can get this to be. Okay, so drums there. There's also BPM drums in 7-8. I'll save those till we get to the strings or something and then I can show them to you, but 7-8. This is one of those where if you go to the page two. Oh, no. Nope. So here you go. And again, you have the mix of everything, so you can say. I have a solid dance kick. Just softly in there to give it a little bit of extra weight. Without it. And now MIDI velocity is another important parameter. It's altering the actual playback velocities of the sequences. You have access to these knobs right here. There's two of them. Scale will expand the range between softest and loudest, whereas at minus scale, then it just becomes a fixed velocity at whatever you set the velocity offset to. Scale and offset work together. so. You can say, I want it to be even more dynamic and then turn down the velocity offset down into the appropriate range. You can kind of tell where it's hitting maximum velocities and you can get to where you have even more dynamic range than what you played originally, which can sometimes be nice when you're getting an orchestra. You want to kind of emphasize those dynamics sometimes. Uh, then this is really fun. This is four patterns. Jeff did this. It's really amazing. Using combo box, different ranges on the keyboard are playing a different MIDI pattern. More phonetic. It gets more energetic as you go up the keyboard. So start with the low one. Okay. And then uh, I had to do hip hop, of course. 
There's also Orky Hop, which is fun for the... Right? There's other galloping triplets. All that kind of stuff. John Williams, just snare cadences, okay? Now we get to some fun things Jeff created. These are actual phrases fully orchestrated for brass. There's four of them on each of four octaves. Major. And they transpose, so. And you hear how the voicings changed? That's because each of these combo boxes are set up so that certain keyboard ranges play the MIDI file this way. Above that, it transposes or does something to offset the data so that it plays. Right? So there's four elements there and then four more elements. This is one that's actually really fun in core. Let's go to core station. So here's the core station version. And I'm gonna use the mod wheel. Amazing. Now, I'm using, hello up there, I think that shows. Um, I'm using actually a little uh, nano control. If you get one of these, put a whole bunch of rubber feet on the bottom of it so that it can stick to wherever you put it so it doesn't move because it's so lightweight. Uh, but I'm using two of the faders to control MIDI CC1 for the first fader and CC11 for the second. And by using modular CC1, One does mod wheel, which in core station changes the actual sample sets smoothly. It's really impressive. And CC11 is volume, so you can keep it at a certain timbre. Whereas mod one, it's playing different samples or softer. So it's very impressive. Very cool. Uh, let's go back here. So after those eight elements, each one of them are now mapped across the keyboard. So you can go. Here we are back with the Discover Station version, Mod Wheel. They just get softer. But these are mapped across the keyboard for a wider range. You can hear what it's doing to keep it in the appropriate ranges. Harp and Celeste, there's eight of these. Here's the first four. And so if you like that one, you just go to Harp Celeste Element 1. That's that first one. And you just play on the keyboard. You got the keyboard range to work with beyond one octave. Okay. Uh, two. Three, and four. Oh, I took my NyQuil and I'm ready for sleep now. Whoa, who's that? Whoa, hey, there's a genie in my room. <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever. You get the idea, you can use these.
together to do fun stuff. So here's harp five through eight. Sounds like uh, I Dream a Genie. Hello, master. <laughs> Okay, so those eight are available across the keyboard. Limited range, it plays, you know, some of them can't play the whole keyboard because they run out of the notes, so forth. So, but they play in a wider range of one octave. Uh, piano and mallets is fun. This is a Jeff put together little ensemble and wrote four possible cue pieces for a... Start with just a marimba motif, adding percussion. Piano. Now we add Glock and Spiel on top. So you can go between these four different possible. I pulled out the piano marimba, just a. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Uh, string elements. These are really impressive. These are, again, the full orchestrated string ensemble. Four octaves, four different phrases. Major. So those are very usable. Up and downs. And again, that would be elements one through four in this list, then elements five through eight. This is really fun. This is going from pizzicatos, two different melody parts. And then above this is the spiccato strings. I mean, there's a dime for all sorts of different uses. <laughs> so uh, woodwinds, same things. There's four elements per patch. And again, this is why we built combo box. It's because Jeff wanted to explore this area of different keyboard ranges for playing different MIDI files, transposed and so forth. And we couldn't do it with their existing just MIDI box. So, so it's his fault that we have combo box. Okay. And then you have all the elements. Like I like, like six. I like six. So we go to six and I could just make a whole song using just this. Okay. Now on top of this, this is what really blows my mind. Jeff made. I think there's six of these that are different film cues, complete film cues. Some of these are like 16 measures long or longer. Uh, four different scene cues. So for instant music you need for some sort of a video, you could use these.
right? Action, comedy. Ooh, what's this over here? You know? Now, let me show you this in Core Station because these are beautiful. Same MIDI sequences. Push a button. It'll take it a second to load. No strings yet. I don't think the woodlands are in yet. Still waiting for the violas to show up. There they are. Can you tell the difference? These strings. Right? Compare that to... It's a whole different vibe. Still works, uh, but it just sounds even more convincing when you go to core. Here's drama. Make it up that hill, dude! Right? Amazing. Super, super cool. Horror. If you look at the mini box for these. Seven bars for that one. Here's the one that's playing. <laughs> Seven major long phase, so not even eight majors. Uh, modern rom com, romance comedy for the. Uh So these are great to write with as a background and add to these. Lovely. Right? So four majors, four different phrases. Uh, noir? That kind of a dark, mysterious. It was a dark night in Los Angeles. Here, let's hear this in Chorus Station. I want to hear those strings. Give it a minute to load. Here, everybody, as they come on. Let's see, which ones are the busy strings? Here's this Picasso strings. So, lovely stuff. Those took a massive amount of work to put together. Just the, the brain power for having all the MIDI box, combo box, playing in different sections, different parts across the keyboard. Really, really inspiring, really cool. Okay, um, BPM key. These are some key with strings, but more in a... The strings are got a pump house on them.
And you'll see this a lot. I, it's one layer for the piano. So I could go over here and instead of combo box, I could go to contact or to piano tech or whatever favorite piano of mine I want to use. All I have to do is go favorite instruments and select it and load it to replace the piano. This is with a groove, so you can... Low C starts the groove, so you can... And then you have control over here for the... And low C, play it again, and that will unlatch the groove. So that's fun. Now, these are the BPM orcs. These are the big ensemble things that have orchestra, strings, woodwinds, brass, all together. And as you can see, there's four MIDI box. You could actually go over here the brass and pizzicato strings. So there's four ensembles, four MIDI files. I'm going to be making a video showing how to replace the MIDI files with your own to make your own variation on this. It's very, very fun, very addicting once you start playing with it to customize this so you can use it for writing cues. It will simplify the process because it can be doing this. I mean, taking the time to orchestrate that with four sections would take a long time in your DAW. Here you can just play it in real time. Right? Okay. Flight of the Dreamer is another big orchestra percussion with strings, brass, woodwinds, and I think uh, the string longs this time doing these really legato parts. Timpani in there. Wherever you play, whatever key you play in. It works, okay? That's fun. Uh, these BPM orcs, uh, the, the ones after that, these three are similar in nature. No percussion. And you'll find when you get to the BPM brass, those same names are there, just, just the brass section. So you can call this up as a complete ensemble. If you don't need the strings, you get rid of the first three, just option, click the little bullet, and now you have just woodwinds and brass. Right? So there's Three different ones of these with brass, woodwinds, and strings. Right? And running free. And if you play with more of the, our, the four voice. Instead of big piano chords, you'll be more sounding more realistic to an orchestrated part. And don't, don't move your fourths and all those rules that I learned a long time ago in school that I forgot about. <laughs> Now these are another really cool orchestrated BPM MIDI box thing that Jeff put together, sounding like specific film composers. So if you want to sound like Goldsmith, it's not as Star Trek 
Jerry Goldsmith, but it's for a lot of the romance comedies he did. Cool. And if you want, you can solo out just one section if you just want one thing to be there. Haydn's a nice 3 4 waltz. It's amazing. Uh, Mozart. That's nice. Uh, John Williams. This is like the, oh my gosh, like the Raiders type of stuff. And then Hans Zimmer's uh, kind of modern score. Synth parts and everything. Else. Right, so you get the idea. Uh, now we get to phrases, and this is a whole other, I, I tried experimenting with all sorts of things, and you guys could let me know in the comments what parts of this library really got your attention that you really like to use, um, just so I know what to make more of in the future, you know? Uh, these are one note, more for producers and people that are looking for putting a little orchestra vibe into a pop track or some sort of dance track, right? One note. And it transposes everywhere soon. And if you own something like Cloud City, then it becomes really cool because you can go to the drums Choose something like, let's say, Chili Trip. And let's say Every Day. And let's go to the tempo instead of 125. Let's make it like, oh, 75. Right? Add a sub bass and you have yourself a cool dance track to work with. So it's a different way. Let's go to Chorus Station and play some of the phrases for a minute. So BPM phrase. Uh, other ones that we have like uh, hip ballroom. So if you went over here to the BPM drum three fours. And you say load into a new unify layer. Just play around the keyboard. You uh, driven to joy. Again, we're in Discover Station. Let's play this in Core Station. Whole different vibe because of all the more samples. And as you see, it says major minor. That's because if you go to the knobs, I have knobs set up to go from major to minor. It's 
So you can go from major to minor. It wouldn't take much work because this is going to a parameter called track number. And if you made a stack with a whole bunch of different MIDI files, you could have it so it's cycling between as many MIDI files as you want. A hundred different MIDI files that were playing different phrases and stuff. It's crazy fun. Uh, happy hopeful woodwinds. That's how they sound in Core Station. Here's how they sound in Discover. Pretty, pretty close. Uh, piano element is from one of Jeff's patches. I so you could use that, add drums, build around it, go for it. Uh, stormy strings. Uh, it takes it a second to go. Mm. Trickster. And triumphant. Just holding one note down. So there's something here for everybody. If you can't play the whole orchestrated parts, there's the different sound likes and the different scenes of film or phrases. Uh, we are winning. Right? Uh, BPM splits. These get really cool. This is a combination of one note to play something in the left hand. And then something else for the right hand. And I'm playing one note and it does the chord changes. I love this chord right here. So it's like a whole cue <laughs> on a finger. Okay. Very, very cool. Uh, Galaxy Adventures is one I put together. Three different MIDI files to put this together. And then in the right hand, it's a nice big happy home alone Christmas time. stuff like that again you've got control over the mix of everything and velocity so you can have fun with that greener pastures is another kind of take on that more legato and And then the right hand. says variations goes to a completely different 
set of MIDI files. And if you go to the Chorus Station version, it's... Again, this is one where the mod wheel is really important. Because the French horn doesn't typically play full volume the whole time. Get the variation. You turn down the drums by turning down the drum velocity. Lots of fun. Uh, head of station. We're hearing this in the core station version. Soft and sweet. Piano on the right hand. Solo all day long. And again, if you go to part one, that's the piano. It says so right here in this layer so you could replace that. What was that? This is just weird, <laughs> but it is like, wow, what was that? Down here, you get the mini file to start. Spooky pizzicato string, sound effects, environment, horns, <laughs> everything. Starts over. <laughs> so, 15 bars long. <laughs> Pretty fun. Uh, on top of this, let's get to the BPM strings. This is really fun stuff. This is where a MIDI file is given a rhythm and then the strings are across the keyboard, play whatever you want. And uh, I can't count 15, eight. But it's there. Uh, 16th note, Steady Adventure. Kind of a common. And this is for Velocity. Really, really nice. And I think, yeah, velocity over here on the mod wheel, their dynamics is doing the same thing as MIDI velocity is doing, so. Okay, three, four, proud waltz. Uh, three, four, rhythmic strings.
right? So you got that to play with. 5 4. This is again one where we're using the MIDI type 0 stack. And so by loading this stack, it loads these four MIDI files. You use Logic, basically, you, you stack uh, four empty tracks and you stack the same MIDI file, you select them all and save them into the same file. And by doing that, it makes a type, I believe it's zero, which is a stack. And that means that you have all of these available from within MIDI box. We can read this type zero format so you can have different variations. I use this for the drum grooves in some of the drum kit stuff we have inside of Unify. Here it is for strings where... You have different patterns. And if you automate this into your sequencer, then you have it going between those four different MIDI files in real time to make the string patterns. You can make something that's not just a MIDI file, but it's composite from lots of MIDI files if you want. Uh, seven, eight string adventures. Again. If we go over here, we go to the drums, we go to the seven, eight. I'm going to point this out. We didn't do a lot with this, but in cases like this, you might notice the strings are a little late. We have a parameter in MIDI box. I kept it at zero for the most part, unless it was a layer with a whole bunch of things together, especially synth parts that we'll see later. You can shift the timing of the, the, the actual MIDI file so I can get these strings to be on top of the beat instead of behind the beat. Like 32, 33 milliseconds. There's all of this Spitfire. Those guys like to have all that beginning buildup of the energy into the sample. Um, and that gives you the space where it's not where the energy is. The energy is over here, right? So this allows you to, they have a tightness parameter, which actually cuts into the samples and you lose all that. What's fun is this allows you to keep all that air and just tell it to play sooner so that... Hear how it's on time now? Here's without it. It's late. So it's nice to be able to do that. If you do that, you will need to shift the notes in your MIDI sequencer earlier to counter that 50 second, 37, whatever your offset is, shift the MIDI note playback so that it makes sure that it gets the beginning of the notes. Otherwise, sometimes it misses those notes. We're still kind of working with this part of MIDI box. I think we can make it a little better, uh, but it, it, at least it does it where it gets it in time because You want it to sound like that with your clock and your sequencer and all that kind of stuff. Uh, onward and upward. Let's keep going. Let's go back to Discover Station to play the other BPM string things that are here. We got up to seven, eight. Oh, adventure number two. So here's string eights. Again, pattern. Again, these sound better in core because there's more samples and it's doing the variety of samples. Here it's playing the same samples chonk, chonk, over and over. Still sounds good. Competitive Edge, this is uh, really fun.
If you play one note, that's the MIDI file I played. I just played... Here, I'll show you how easy it is. I'm... Oh, I... Let's see. So, yeah, if I was to go over here and record... Okay, and I'm in logic. I can quantize that so it's in time. And all I'm going to do is say export just for fun really fast. Um, fun MIDI to the desktop. So I've exported a MIDI file of me just playing C, right? And here it is. So I can go to MIDI box, open up MIDI box, say click right here. Drag this over and say open, and now one note. Now, this isn't exactly what I played. Double click here, double click here, so it's back at zero. Offset lets you offset the velocity. So they're all maxed and if I bring this down and bring up the scale hear how it emphasizes the soft notes get softer the loud notes get louder so you can play with the velocity scale or if you double click these so that there's zero or 100% scale and 0% offset there you go so that's all it takes to put your own take on rhythm. You can quantize it. You can not quantize it. Uh, try experiments with different notes and stuff like that to see what comes out when you're playing chords. If you're playing just one note, then it's not going to change to any notes that might sound bad. If you put other notes into there and then you play chords, you play major chords, it might sound great. When you play minor chords, it might not. We don't have technology to shift and fix notes between major and minor and stuff like that. Yet. Someday, maybe. Or there's Scalar. There's other MIDI effect plugins that are more complex that can do that to MIDI file type things. So you're welcome to use those as well inside of Unify with this library even. Just replace MIDI box with Scalar 2 and off you go. This is those strings, but Pizzicato has joined the party. Fun. Okay, so here's Flight of the Dreamer. This is the legato strings. You play one note. And I just held one note long before I went to the next note instead of being short rhythms. And as a result, pretty cool. Uh, more BPM stuff. Here's going to war. Uh, modern city life. I showed you the BPM Orc, Modern City Life, earlier. Uh, Modern Warrior, this is combining synth with the strings. The first one is Pizzicato. Mod Wheel, or actually right here, Filter. Because Mod Wheel's doing the synth, the string dynamics on the orchestra. Right? Uh, Modern Warrior 2 is Bow. So you have that to play with. Orchestra and Synth Nirvana. Yeah, 
have a rhythm component to it, but it's not really like in your face and a huge string pad. And you have volume control for the strings over the pad. Right? So you can control them. Renegade, uh, this is kind of crazy. This is an experiment I did where um, I made a MIDI file for each of the four string sections. Right? And then we turned it into polyphonic. It used to be it required eight uh, BBC Symphony Orchestra plugins for each of the four sections, but thanks to Unify 1.2, I believe is where we got polyphonic transpose to show up. So now it's just <laughs> one plugin. And we can play chords. And then frenetic is where I've gone through. Now this one, this one uses all 32 plugins. There's eight for each one <laughs> that has a MIDI box, and each MIDI box can be set to different timing values. So while some are at 1-1, one, one, some are at 3-2, some are at, you know, 1-2. And as a result, when you play a note, each time you play a note, you get different timing combinations when you play chords. Frenetic. It's crazy stuff. And then there's just the violins by themselves, so forth, uh, running free. Um, right? Uh, underwater. It's kind of a sound design. I didn't show you Triumphant. Um, I'll show you Triumphant in a second, but here. So you have a synth element and strings, which is kind of fun, and cool effects, and all the stuff Unified gives you access to. Uh, triumphant. Both uh, Pizzicato and Bowed. So those are fun. BPM winds, these are the woodwind sections. And for the ones, I did a rock and roll woodwinds, which was a distortion. So you could do. So if you want to do some Led Zeppelin, go for it. Uh, so that's rhythmic, all sorts of elements. Again, it's just a simple MIDI file, which you can make your own like I showed you and replace it. And now you have it playing whatever groove you want it to play. Uh, let's get to these. These are BPM, WS means wave sequencing. This is where I'm using MIDI box to trigger timing. Poly box is distributing each note that it gets to a different MIDI channel. These are all set to different MIDI channels up to MIDI channel nine. So here, if I go to this view where it shows you everything and I zoom it just a little bit more so you can see them, you'll see each one pop on by different notes. Oh, you're loud. Kind of a fun experiment. I have the same thing with synth. So now it has a synth element and pump house and timing. Um,
And then with a synth little drum pattern that I put together so you can <laughs> so you have drums and orchestra and the whole thing going crazy so you have that uh, tricky orchestra is a MIDI box and poly box are cycling between these three layers. So if I play. If you change any of these layers to something else, if I went to this layer here and I went, I want this to be hive. So now I have a synth part in the middle of this wave sequence part and Let's go over here and find something like uh, oh, Brassy Joe. That might be Brassy. And then this is a separate string part that has its own. drums if you want to go there you can <laughs> okay so bpm that's kind of the end of bpm and now we get to more uh, combinations and mixes and elements put together uh, to start with these are brass here's copeland fanfare And then this actually goes hand in hand with the orchestra version. The orchestral version adds percussion. So you have crash cymbal and timpani. kind of a thing right uh here's a staccato this is the five sections of the brass tubas and stuff down uh here's the long open brass And again, the Discover Station version is very nice. If you go to the Core Station, it's even nicer because now the mod wheel can go between... A little bit simpler. So you have the five sections together, which is really nice. Uh, power Brass Staccatos is just a more aggressive. And then Horn and Bassoon is a nice combination of... thing okay uh here's the piatti crash it's only on two notes right here uh let's see shrink this so you can see the keyboard uh right here on e and f is the is the close 
and I have them set to mono. If you open Guru Sampler, you can set it to be polyphonic if you want to play both. I have them ring out. I set them to mono so that way if you went right. Because that's what you can do with a crash. Uh, here we go to guitar layers. These are really pretty. Synth pad. Harp. Version 2. Again, you have control over timing. Like no random timing, or lots of random timing. Okay. Celeste and harp. These are different elements in the percussion category. They have xylophone and celeste and glockenspiel and harp. Lovely to have them. Uh, these are piano plus, so piano and right. And then if you wanted to replace the piano, it's just part five. Replace it with. Keyscape has some really cool moody pianos or anything that's it, right there to just replace. The 8-foot version is the same but just transposed up so you have access to these higher notes if you're on a 5-octave keyboard like I am right now. Okay. Uh, grand and fast strings is just that. So you can just play your parts and have strings. Oops. <laughs> there. End on the right note. Uh, fast eight foot is again higher. So. Okay. Harp and FM Rhodes. Okay, Studio Steinway, Jeff wanted to make a piano for classical, just by itself. And it's interesting, this piano, this, the, the Steinway that's inside of Unify, is part of the piano book uh, series of instruments that uh, Spitfire Audio, Christian, those guys have made available for free. And I contacted Christian and got clearance to talk to the gentleman that created the actual piano and license it from him for Unify. So you can find the Church Steinway at the Piano Book website, and it's really cool that it's inside Unify. And if you go over here, you can turn up the volume of a string pad that's hidden. turn it off and it's gone again so and you can automate the volume here right so you have access to automating all that kind of stuff if you want and then symphonic is a little bit more orchestral just plays along nicely with you. It's not moody and it's not fast, but it just sits there and it's... Off you go. Um, then I showed you the Copeland. Uh, 
Flutes in Paradise is a nice sound design woodwind with effects. Okay, uh, orchestra full grand in piano. Okay, then we get the orchestra long. This is the strings, brass, and woodwinds all together. So by clicking a button, I loaded 15 different plugins to get me all of the brass, all the woodwinds, and all the strings. And I have control here, brass and woodwinds. Pure and soft. Okay. Uh, Skippy Harpy Dreamland. Brass and harp. Nice. Uh, synergy. Brass and synth. Okay. Uh, now we have strings and wind soft. And again, you have control over the different elements and the air. Which is automating the uh, EQ. Okay. And then bright is just a brighter. Okay. A magical motion is actually using MIDI box to give you motion plus effects. So Nusika Ooze and BBC Soft Pad is a combination of three elements. Strings, a synth pad, and voice. So you can play with those elements to get what you want. Pad worthy in strings is really lush. Synth pad and strings is always a good day. Uh, softest Sanctuary. And these effects you can pretty much call up anything you want. What's cool is these are unified layers, which means you can open up, open up this unify and then go to the browser. You could go to any patch inside of any library and put it into here. So you could go to Cloud City and you could go to like maybe one of the BPM pads and put it in here with the strings. So let's go BPM pad, maybe like simple. So it's gonna load that and it's going to keep the strings up there, so... Off you 
go. So by opening up these Unify layers, you could actually replace either one of these with anything you want. Go to the browser here. If you have the Omnisphere libraries, if you saved your own patches of your own favorite combinations, put them in here. They all get treated with this lush reverb from this auxiliary bus. And off you go. Pretty cool. Uh, soft as Snowball. I have low end that you can remove and the high end. One nice thing we did with this update is Shane smoothed the, uh, there's no noise when you're using these knobs. We have to go through each parameter and put in smoothing code. It's a lot of work, um, but he did it to all four EQ parameters. So you can automate this. And there's no clicking audio glitching going on, which is nice. So this way you can bring in the low end or take it out. No glitching. Yay. So happy for that. Uh, strings. Here's uh, different elements of. One of the uh, airwave texture pads from the standard library of Unify. combined with uh, the tremolo strings. Right? Uh, then the different sections, this is all five strings, the long phrasing. And these do not respond to velocity. It's a kind of a modern film scoring thing that they don't, the, the spiccatos do, but these do not. And then you're supposed to use MIDI CC1 and MIDI CC11. That's why it's really important to have faders for this stuff to be able to go. You need to record that in. So a lot of times you play the notes first and then you go back and you go back and add the automated volume dynamics in. Uh, that's the case for the longs, but for the pizzicatos, reverb you can bring down. have access to each of the sections if you want for the mix strings piccato and here it responds by velocity so we worked really hard to get fades and even use percentage fades by holding down control and shift you can have percentage fades so that it fades properly with energy staying where you want it to be between one range and another. So. That way they all blend from one section to another. Okay, this is with Jitterbox, so you can get even more. Harp and pit strings is a favorite. Super strong spiccato. I'm using elements of unify to uh, accent and make the attack stronger. Here's strings and double reeds. Violin, spiccato, and violas. Just a limited range of them. Uh, woodwinds, clarinets, and bassoons. Uh, 
uh, the ensemble staccatissimo, and then the longs. Okay, now on top of this, I want to point out that there's also the instrument version, both for Discover and for Core. Uh, Discover, there's 45 articulations. The different articulations in the plugin are all in one patch list. So instead of going here and choosing between the four like this, they're just all in a big list. And the advantage to that is that you could say, I want uh, bass trombones. <laughs> And then I want to have, say, cellos, uh, spiccatos added. So now I... And I want the basses spiccato added. Load that into a new unified layer. And if you have the core station, then it goes nuts. Because there's 315 articulations. So when you get to all of the, let's see, core station instruments there's so many so you could go to let's say violin or let's say violas uh violas get the bartoks if you want so violas bartok pizzicato add those and let's say violin two uh bartok so we have some bartoks from the core library added in with discover station <laughs> So you can build your own ensembles really easy just by selecting one patch. These are the... Uh, and then go to another patch. Right click, say load into new unify layer and boom. And I want some sort of a flute. So go up here to the flutes and see we have all of these different... Oh wait. That's under wind. So you got to go to the end of the list. Wind, flute, marcato. Let's add those to this. So we say load into unified layer and clarinet marcados. What the heck? So we got violin, two, cellos, uh, flute, and clarinet. So I made a layer of four patches in about 15 seconds. So you have access with the core version. You have 300 plus patches to layer across the keyboard all you want. With the, uh, with the Discover Station version, it's 45 instruments, articulations, and so forth to work with. Um, there you go. So that's the library. All right. I, I'm all talked out. Hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Thank you for your time. See you later.